Today we are in the studio of Priti Ghosh, and her paintings are all around. We're going to ask Priti to talk about some of her paintings. But first, Priti, I welcome you and would like to ask you how you began painting. You see, not painting, but drawing was a part of our syllabus. And mother had uh, given us, the children, a period at the end of the week, last week, a uh, last uh, period of Saturdays. So there we had many teachers, like uh, we had uh, Bipadi, we had Krishna Lalji, just to come occasionally and teach us. But I really began painting in earnest. That was way back in uh, 59 or 60, when I started painting with Shonji Bunda. When did you come to the ashram? I came in 47, before the partition. We came from Bangladesh, but uh, my grandfather, grandmother, that come here before the partition, and we settled down here. And when did you first see Mother and Sri Aurobindo? Your first memory? I have no memory. That's very tragical for me. I have no memory of Sri Aurobindo. Though I, calculating the times, uh, I've seen him 12 times. But I don't remember him. So, somebody said, if you don't remember, have no memory of him, at least he has seen you. So you should be blessed for that. True, true. And Mother? What, do you, what, what are your first memories of meeting Mother? I remember going to her when, I think I was five or six. It was in the meditation hall and it had rained. And I was carrying a small basket with flowers, a metallic basket. She was sitting on a low chair and uh, I was accompanied by my mother and uh, Beladi. And it so happened I slipped. And mother was very concerned but uh, then the flowers were rearranged and then I took them to her. But that was quite vague. The memory, strong, strongest memories were when we used to go at seven o'clock in the morning uh, to the landing and mother used to be sitting there in the ashram. Uh, you know the landing uh, which leads on to Shobindo's room. Yes, yes. So she used to stand or sit there, and I remember her standing, then she used to sit. So early morning, that was our first uh, beginning of the day, we used to go to her at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I remember a very funny thing. And um, I wanted curly hair. So I went and told mother, so everyone said, if you are so, so much intent upon that, you go and tell mother. So I went and told mother, mother, I would like to cut my hair. She, she said, you have puchi. She spoke that word, you have puchi in the hair. Then my mother explained, no, she wants curly hair. So mother didn't comment on that. And I did go bald, but with no effect and no curly hair. And uh, you were telling me some things uh, the other day about uh, when you young girls would dance before mother. Oh you yes, oh yes. I love to dance. And I think, uh, you know, we were segregated from the main uh, main activities of the playground. The seniors would be doing the exercise in the main ground. And the other side of the playground, there was the old school, the building. 
It was a very weird building with a tunnel-like opening at the uh, opening to a courtyard. And mother would come and give the children groundnuts, roasted groundnuts. So one day, without informing my uh, family members, I just uh, bundled off a sari under my arm, and then I somehow managed to wear it, and I offered a dance to the mother. How old was I? I don't remember. Seven, eight. And mother, naturally, they all had a good laugh. And my family members were just, you know, agape. They said, how could you manage to get this sari? An old sari, you know. But I managed to give a dance in front of mother. And uh, every other occasion was a day good enough to, you know, make a dance uh, and offer it to her. And on hind thoughts, you know, after so many years, we just... Uh, it, it's with a nostalgic sadness that poor thing we made her sit there. She used to sit in front of the uh, the map of India. That was her usual seat. And uh, we'd have all these silly dances. And she'd watch with a lot of patience and with always appreciation. Now you told me the other day that one time she said no dance. <laughs> Tell us that story. Tarini and I were very good friends. And uh, we had uh, rehearsed a dance. And uh, we went and told Mother, Mother, we'd like to offer this dance. She said, look, I have no time now. We wouldn't leave. So leave her. So she used to go around the playground and uh, after uh, according to the, you know, the groups. And uh, after every group, both of us, we stood there and we went on pleading, Mother, please, Mother, please, Mother. Finally, when she went to the storeroom and stood there, the captain's room, we finally went for the last time and said, please, Mother. Finally, she just gave in. And the program we put up was such a farce that she just shook her head. <laughs> now I'd like to ask you to tell us a bit about your paintings. Can you could bring the first painting? This, uh, among my other paintings, are, uh, is based on one of Shobindo's uh, uh, a few lines from Shobindo's uh, Savitri. I forget which book. And uh, there it's... Uh, the earth was lying in a torpor and life came and uh, beckoned the earth to wake up. So this was the movement of, uh, you know, breaking forth from all that uh, in conscience and waking the earth to new life. This is uh, from Shobindo Savitri, I suppose book two, and there Shobindo depicts the travail and the agony of the Mother Earth as she's aspiring for more light. So this is uh, part of a uh, trio painting that I did. This is the first one where Mother Earth is uh, praying to the Divine to bring more light into her. This is part of the cities. This is Mother Earth. She looks more young here. She is also in a meditative mood. She's praying for more light to come into her.
This is the third in the series. Also, Mother Earth in a praying mood. And uh, we find here that the light is already pouring on the mass, the so-called uh, inert mass of Earth. This is uh, uh, light. She is uh, breaking into the earth and uh, awakening the whole earth to more life and more light. So it shows the exuberance as she is breaking forth from all this dead, dead matter, breaking it and establishing her reign. This is life personified as she is calling the whole creation to joy. This is the abstract or the more uh, physical expression of this joy which has finally come into nature. All the exuberance of colors and the joy in the, in the, the sunlight filtering in and there's a kind of lightness which I've tried to portray. All nature was at beauty's festival? Yes, yes. That passage? Yes. Inspired you? Good. This is also, I think, I painted last year. It's again the amorphous, uh, the being which is trying to take shape and establish itself. I shouldn't say amorphous. The nebulous being which is trying to establish itself. Well, this is in continuation of my, more or less the theme, the light breaking through, again, the hardness of the unconscious or matter. Did you show your paintings to Mother? Hmm, plenty of them plenty of them. Do you remember that uh, the three girls going towards the moon? That she had seen. I don't know what comment she had given, uh, but uh, my teacher was very happy. She said that, well, we are trying for the new expression in art, and I think she's got it, because it was abstract, it was beautiful. That's what he said. It is now in Shraddha, no? Which, in where Shraddha, are they? I've seen three ladies and the moon. Huh. That is the original painting. No, where is the original one? I forget. Original one was done on a cloth and uh, I'd given it to one of my relatives. He wanted to have it printed and it was eaten away by the moth. So I did it again on the, this uh, canvas. canvas, proper canvas. So Shraddha is a print? What I don't Shraddha remember Shraddha. which one. The three ladies know one over the other, looking towards the moon. And there's the wave? Yeah, little wave. Oh, that is a different painting. Yeah. That is original, but it's a different painting. I'd given it to Balakrishnaji. I was just, uh, you know, putting the colors and then I didn't know Mother would appreciate it so much. She liked it immensely and she said it should be put in such a place that people can see. And there was another painting too, I think, Bangladesh War. I've shown uh, the mother carrying the dead bodies 
and mother had liked it very much because during the Bangladesh war. I see. What does this represent? Can you tell us uh, about anything? This is the, the spirit which is not very clear. It's coming and the touch of the, sorry, the touch of the uh, light is creating havoc in the inconscient. She had liked it very much because it was something new. <laughs> Did she ever speak anything to you about the paintings directly? Uh, yes, I've taken a, I don't know, I think I've got it ruled. And uh, she put a few remarks. For instance, uh, it was a group of pilgrims going towards the light. And uh, uh, she said, you better show streams of light coming through the mouth of the opening of the, sorry, of the cave. Otherwise, it looks like a figure. And there was an old man with his back to the whole uh, movement. And uh, she said in French, oh, le pauvre, il ne voit pas. Otherwise, she liked it. Uh, not a, <laughs> the most, uh, how should I say, mm. The most trying uh, experience I had was when I'd taken out a small painting and I tried to copy the landscape from the, from the balcony I was standing. And she just burst out, you think this is painting? It's a caricature of nature. Why do you paint? Are you interested? If you are, if you are just doing to copy nature, I'd say you're worse than a camera, a bad camera, and ask you to leave it. My God, that was on my birthday, one of the birthdays, and I just came down crying unconsolably. Then my auntie explained, look, if she has found some, uh, you know, something substantial in you, that's why she burst out at you. And then later on, actually, uh, on another birthday, when I took her the paintings, she said, look, you try to paint what comes from within. When you see nature, don't try to copy this color or that color. But what is she trying to express? So what comes from within, you try to. And she had asked me twice, are you interested in painting? And then I said, why? And she just nodded her head and kept quiet. Which year was this done? This one? No. Uh, I think uh, that was earlier. I was, I think, in my teens yet and I'd taken that painting. This was done later on with Shonji Vanda. When you were very young, how many times a day did you see Mother? Oh, every day, three times, four times. <laughs> we lost the number of uh, times we used to go to her. And she was so easily accessible, especially in the evenings, you know, she used to uh, move about in the playground. And if we had anything to tell her, Mother, I've lost this, or Mother, this has happened in the school. She'd have a, you know, she was all ears, yes, what's your complaint? So tell us something about the technique, style of painting. Uh, I mean, I haven't had a real, uh, how should I say, sound technical uh, training, whatever Shonjivanda gave me, you know, and uh, he didn't bother about the strokes. So if I were to take this to mother, she would have just dismissed it that this is not oil color. Because my oil color is more like water color, you know. Water color mixes the colors. Whereas uh, oil color, you have to go on strokes. So this is oil color, but this looks like water color. Very much water color. 
and I don't have a particular technique. I just do whatever way, you know, it expresses whatever I, I wish to express. So whether it's in this stroke, yes, from within. Did you first begin with watercolor, then shift it to yeah. oil? Yes, always. My sketches are in uh, watercolour and then I develop them on the oil colour. So why you uh, took to oil painting? Oil painting has its advantages. It's uh, long lasting and it has a brilliance which uh, watercolour doesn't give. Watercolour and I have a <laughs> A very bad habit of uh, rubbing off when I'm not happy. That you can't do with watercolour. It gets very, very dull. Watercolour is dull as such. Oil colour has a sparkle because of the oil. And uh, so I'm a very bad technician, if at all I can say, concerning the artist's uh, technique. Because you have to go at the first stroke, isn't it? So if I'm not happy, I rub it off and then again I apply colours and I try to see that they blend, the colours blend. Which, normally oil colour, you go by strokes. How much time do you take to do a painting? It depends. If I have, uh, you know, the colours are there, the figure, if I placed it correctly and if it expresses my uh, whatever I wish to express, I transfer it to the canvas. On the canvas uh, it takes me about a month or two months to finish a painting. You wait it to dry or you keep on working? It's uh, dangerous. If you allow it to dry, suppose I finished uh, a portion today, I try to work on it, it becomes immediately matte. So I have to either leave that portion and go on to the next portion. And oil colour has to be done at a go. So when you say you take a month or two hmm. to do a painting, hmm. how many hours you spend a, a day or a week? Depends if uh, I'm uh, free from my other uh, obligations, either in the school or at home. Then, especially during the vacations, I could paint for three hours, and I was so happy. But sometimes it may happen that you are in the middle of painting, and you are getting uh, very good mood, you know, inspiration to continue. But you have a class or some other obligation, then. I've learned to live with it, Arvin. And my teacher used to say, you have to accept life. And this is the way you've got to paint. Because you're painting against the current. Nobody does painting here. So whatever you are doing, you're going against the current. So I've accepted. If I'm, I've come here and then I'm called away, either I have to attend my mother or I have to go to the school, I've taken it very philosophically. I would like to ask you to uh, elaborate on his comment or her comment, your teacher's comment, nobody does painting here. Ma uh, yes. What does that mean? Nobody is really doing seriously painting. You see, in their times, in the 30s, uh, he had come here uh, in the year 1933. And that was a peak period for the artists, you know. Uh, Gentil Alda, Krishna Lalji, then uh, uh, what's his name, Nishikanto, then Anil Bhatto. They were a real group of uh, painters, you know. They were all qualified, they've had their training either in uh, Baroda or in Shantiniketan. And mother was really trying to build up, you know, that movement, artistic movement. They used to go out far away to what is now, you have uh, Jeepma. There they were, you know, uh, miles and miles of this red sand. 
now where Auroville stands. These people used to go there and sketch. And every month they used to offer mother a painting. And uh, on uh, seeing one of uh, Shonjivunda's painting, she had commented to Nolinida that he had painted the, the sunrise, you know. They had spent the night and in the early morning the sun was coming out in all its splendor. And he had caught that. So when mother saw it, she said that all this time he was in a cocoon. Now he's come out. So he also had uh, experiences. He was painting on this uh, balcony street near Gaudidi's uh, house and he was sketching the balcony. And he had a wishful thinking, I wish mother would come to the balcony. It was nine o'clock in the morning. She never came up, came that late to the balcony. And sure enough, mother came to the balcony. She looked this way and that and she went in. So the next day when he took the painting, uh, Chinmay was beside her mother and uh, Chinmay said, Mother, there's a figure there because Shonjivanda had painted mother. So mother very seriously said, that's supposed to be me. <laughs> How many paintings you have done so far? Oh, I've been numberless. I don't keep oh. count. Like these big oil paintings? I don't remember. No, dining or painting, yes. I always forget them. This has an interesting history. Niroda had written a book, Shobindo with the children. I'm not very sure of the title. Sudha asked me if I could paint a cover for the book. So I hesitated and I said, look, I'm not uh, so competent at painting Shobindo and especially with so many figures around him. So we dropped the idea. And uh, in the meanwhile, I think she had taken Shobindo's photo and it was used as the cover. Later on, I think after a year or two, I said, okay, let me put this idea into the uh, into painting. And uh, I tried to draw the meditation hall. Shobindo seated there and the children round him, listening to the stories that he's recounting. You mentioned the children when they saw the painting. Tell us about that. Uh, Amla and uh, I think it was Sukshma. Both the teachers from kindergarten, they brought the children. In fact, uh, the teachers had brought groups of children. There was this certain group which they came and squatted in front of the painting and they started identifying themselves that I am such a one, I am such a one. And they were so happy, so very happy. Do you remember any of them? They're all imaginary children. <laughs> and uh, Leonardo warns us against this, that uh, you should do life sketch or the children tend to get all alike. They become monotonous. So that's why I tried to give each one an individual expression. the children playing with the sun rays. But as I said, the picture has gone through so many hands, it's been mutilated and so portion of the painting has been cut off on all sides. There was more space here, more space here. I forget the lines. It's the birth of the constellations, I think. I forget the lines.
Uh-huh. I had a very wonderful experience when I was painting this, but I'm not going to divulge. How do you find it? I like it very much. It's very beautiful. The colors are extraordinary. And the movement. Will you explain it a bit more? How it revealed itself to you? I was trying this painting. There are some paintings that come back again and again because I just couldn't get the right expression. So this one was the final. I've, uh, so to say, spoiled so many canvases by trying to portray this. This, uh, you know, the movement of the... I think the birth of the constellation. I'm not very... I don't remember the lines. But I had a, it was a beautiful experience. Okay. So you please tell us how you something of the family background, how we came to the ashram and how we settled here. I'll have to go quite a bit back then. My grandfather, he was a great friend uh, of... Uh, no, my grandfather's father was a great friend of Shobindo's father. And Shobindo's father used to go to Khulna. He was very popular there as a doctor. And uh, they became very friendly and uh, through that relationship my grandfather came to know about Shobindo. And uh, at that time, you see, the influence of Sri Ramakrishna was very strong in Bengal. But my grandfather went and visited Shobindo in the jail and he still remembers with fondness the queer way Shobindo spoke in Bengali. But he became a real staunch follower of uh, Shobindo. So when Shobindo came to the ashram, he said, I'm going to follow him. He came, but my grandmother was a great uh, devotee of Sri Ram Krishna and uh, Sri Sri Sharodama. And, uh, but she accepted whatever, wherever her husband led her. And they came quite often to the ashram. Then, in, uh, after my father passed away, my grandfather was decided that... He had already taken the decision, he would come and settle in Pondicherry. And uh, my mother, a young widow of 22, naturally the whole family objected to her coming and settling in the ashram. What is she going to do leading a life of an ascetic? But she was absolutely determined and my Father had visited here. He was great, fr very friendly with uh, Shudhita and Panuda and all those people. And where uh, now you have baby this boarding, Junjun boarding, there it was known as Khulna House. All those who came from Khulna, they used to put up there. And my father was a regular visitor there. So my father, he had just become a lawyer and uh, but he had decided that sooner or later he would come and join the ashram. So that's how my mother came, uh, the whole family moved here in 47. That was before the partition. We came in February and the partition took place in August. So how many of you came here, you and your mother? No, my grandparents, my mother, my sister and I. My auntie joined a year later. So, uh, did you join the Ashram school? Yes, immediately. 
there was something very nebulous. I mean, uh, as kindergarten, because we were so small, there was hardly any kindergarten. I think Jumurdi and they, they began their classes from level uh, three or four, but we were, I don't know whether Jumurdi at all joined the kindergarten. We had uh, Pran Bhai and Jayanti Bhai, uh, Gul Ben, Rameshwari Ji, they were our first kindergarten teachers. Do you recollect any uh, incident, either in sports or studies, something worth sharing with others? Sports, I loved to run a lot. That I remember. And we used to just race across the playground whenever we had the opportunity. And I remember running, uh, uh, not in between Nirodha's legs, but I remember I used to run around him. That I remember. And uh, we used to have our sports in the playground. And Mother used to be there. Mother held a rope when we did uh, rabbit race and running in the sports ground. That I remember. And interesting incidents. Uh, um, um, I wanted to show up to my grandmother that how well I could do hop, step and jump. So I practiced very, very earnestly. And uh, the the day we had the sports, mother was sitting there nicely with the other officials. All the three chances I had, I just came near the sandpit, hop, step, and I just go and jump. So after I was so dejected and my grandmother had come to see me specially, I felt very dejected. So after the event was over, mother came and, you know, with her... Uh, uh, was, uh, what do you say with her Japanese shoe? She came and felt the sand, whether there was anything wrong with the sand. And then she went over to where uh, the finishing line, where she had to hold the, the tape. So I went and stood beside her and she just gave me a look. <laughs> anyway, I was uh, that... Uh, Soothed some of the some of the dejection I had suffered. So when did you take up painting? Painting, I kept at it. Uh, you know, after I finished my school, there was uh, I don't know. There was a period of I think. Uh, I didn't do any painting. And then Shonjivanda moved on the Mission Street that was very close to our old house. And my sister was interested in uh, shell works. And Shonjivanda was very good at it. So I went along with her to just, I never heard. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. No. I remember Bal Krishna ji used to take us to his house where he, I think he was living in Busi Street. Sunanda Ben, Bal Krishna ji, then Vijay Poda, we were all tots. Then Kiran, Kiran used to be put on the cycle. And uh, Krishna Roy, uh, Bittu's mother. So we used to go and paint at his house there. But then that's absolutely a big memory. I didn't uh, follow it up. What hobbies you pursued in your school days? Dancing. <laughs> Every Sunday, Anuven used to take our dancing class. And we love to dance. All through our younger days, we have just danced and danced and danced. And then directing plays since that young age. Uh, we had done, we used to make, uh, you know, small, do some uh, small dances and uh, we used to show it to Anuben. So one of these plays she liked very much, Dhruva. And she said, why don't you do it in front of mother? So we enacted that and uh, with uh, 
we added music to it. We made it more a la Hindi show with the appearance of gods and goddesses and one of our senior teachers, Bengali teachers, she took objection to that, that uh, this is not the story of Dhruva. You have added too much of, uh, you know, ornamentation to the whole thing, but mother liked it very much. And then after the play was over, she said, you have nothing in the fridge I can give to the children? So they said, no. So they had just a few flowers, I think it was a divine presence, and we were given that as a consolation gift from the mother. So you had more inclination for drama than painting for this? Yes. Drama and dancing, I mean, we were fond of dancing. Every other day we'd collect materials from different friends. We just tuck in the dresses in our group shots and then give a dance program to Anubhai. So when did your real passion begin for painting? That was when luckily everything happens in life at the destined time. So when Shonjivanda moved in this house and I followed my sister, I didn't know my destiny would, was fixed now. I had to go in for painting. So he uh, started teaching me with uh, sketches and uh, things to copy from. Then I took it really seriously. And uh, I remember the day I painted those three girls and the moon. He used to take classes in the school on two days. So when he came back and he saw the painting, he said, ah, she's got it now. The new way of expressing what mother had anticipated, a new form of expression in painting. What was the year? I think it was in the 70s, if I'm not mistaken, in the 70s or 69. Did you do much work with Anubhai? We used to just dance, uh, that's all. No regular, now we have uh, regular dancing classes, no? Each one, uh, how should I say, um, going into more and more of uh, this technical side, no? Uh, classical dances. Mother was against any classical form of dancing. That's why she wanted Anuben to direct the dances. Because Anuben, though she had learned with Uday Shankar, but she had her own way of expressing. And that's what mother appreciated. If you see some of her paintings, uh, some of her photos in the old bulletins, Radha's prayer, you can really feel that it's the expression of the body, you know, as she's offering herself to the Divine. And uh, very early, that was, I think, before the 30s, Mother was coaching Shahanadi how to dance. And Mother herself showed the movements, how Radha has to offer herself to the Divine. And these photos of the, in the bulletin of Anuban, they really portray that, the whole expression of the body. So what style of dance you give to this? It was nothing very, neither Kathak nor Bharatnatyam, though we learned Bharatnatyam, neither uh, Kathak also, we learned all this, but well, the dances, we, uh, I don't have a very strong impression about them. But Mother, you said Mother didn't like the classical dance. Yes, she wanted to break out of that. Anything classical, anything traditional, she wanted to break. She was an iconoclast, you know. She wanted to do something new out of it. That's why she had told Huta Ben also, don't try to follow what the 
you know, what the classical painters have done. Don't try to listen to them. Don't try to copy the modern artists. Try to do something new. So, how did Sanyamda teach you? What kind of training gave you? Uh, you see, he was, though his father was also, you know, an artist and he used to paint a lot of all these uh, canvases, everything in the in their home in Chittagong. But uh, Shwanjivanda, when he came here, mother immediately said, look, people believe that I can teach painting. Would you like to learn? And Shwanjivanda, then she told Shwanjivanda, you get... Uh, paper, pencil, colors, and then she said, I'm going to show you how to draw a portrait. So you come on such a day, and uh, you know, Pavitrada's corridor, there, when Shwanjivanda went, she had already installed the easel, and she had got a piece of canvas, she had mounted it on the easel, and Chinmoy was the model. So, uh, when Shonjivanda went, she was already painting, you know, the background, the hair. And he said that the rest of the painting, she did it in such a way, she was speaking at the same time applying the colors. That with one painting, she had made me an artist. She said, look, the background and the hair, hello, they should be, uh, blended so that it doesn't stick out. Then all these details, you know, the way she explained and she carried out, you know, the brushes went on so, uh, so, uh, how should I say, it, they flowed, you know, the colors. That Chonjivanda was absolutely flabbergasted. He said that through that one painting she had made me an artist. All your paintings used to be sent to the mother for her I, Whenever I painted a painting, I used to send it with Dada. And Dada wasn't an artist, no? So you take the painting and you'd say, Mother has said good, etc. But I remember Usha Ben, you know? She used to ask for comments. And she used to send, the, I think, the paper and Mother used to write in that. The mother book. I don't know, but uh, it never struck me that mother would write something. That would have been so lovely. So when I painted this uh, Samadhi painting, it was the New Year's Eve, 1972. And that was the last meditation she, she sat with us. You know, Nara, it was a lovely experience. Uh, at, uh, we used to sit round where now the Samadhi is. Uh, Shogun was still there. And the whole thing was just a mound, you know. And there were the giant ferns over the, over that, uh, that cement uh, work. And um, we were, you know, it was midnight, so we used to, Haradhunda was there and he would lay the mats and pillows and we would just go to sleep. Midnight sharp, she would just uh, strum on the chords of the piano and she would wish everyone from the window, Bon Ani. Oh, what a voice she had. And then she would play the organ. So, you were asking how. So the 72 painting, that was the last uh, time she sat with us. She sat in a room, of course. And uh, then I was inspired with the blue light on the, on the samadhi. So I painted this one and my, there was w the white portion which was left uh, just blank. So my sister, Smriti Di, she suggested, why don't you ask mother to sign because you never have you don't have any single painting with her signature and poor mother had a, even dada it never struck him I'd, 
put the painting on a board and given it to her, sent it to her. So she had a tough time, you know, reaching out and signing blessings. Dada could have easily <laughs> folded it. But anyway, I got the blessing and that's the only painting. I'm so grateful. That's the only painting she has uh, signed. Do you have it here? Yes, it's there in the sitting room. You've seen it, madam. Yes, of course, of course. So we didn't uh, write to her anything regarding painting technique or guidance as such. Any questions you put to mother in writing? Mm -hmm. I no fraud. I think from that point of view, I was very. It never struck me so many things could have been done. Are there any other questions of your? Uh, yeah, I had. You know, when I took her this. Uh, no. I sent that painting to her, it was a waterfall. And uh, she sent back saying that your water doesn't look like water at all, it looks like wood. And she sent me a birthday card with a lovely Chinese uh, scenery of the waterfall. And uh, I think in one of the the next birthday she sent me a beautiful this that uh, I'm sending you this card so that you become more and more conscious of the divine beauty. Of the eternal beauty. Who has inspired you in paintings? Which are the artists? Yes, uh, yeah, I broke away from there. Shonji Vanda was trained by the mother. And mother was naturally, uh, her, this background was more Western. And she used to, uh, I think, give uh, Leonardo's uh, paintings, and somehow Shonjivanda was very, very much naturally influenced by her. her she had her own way of uh, teaching him, but somehow I got it from uh, Shonjivanda, the Western way, the Western concept of drawing figures. So I have very little Indianness about me in my figures. Shonjivanda said, last year you must have been a Westerner. Because your concept, your way of uh, your way of uh, depicting figures are very, very realistic than uh, you know idealistic. And I find the movement is very natural in the figures, not fixed. And of course, you have to identify yourself with the figures. I don't have any model. So I am my myself model. I have to identify with the figures I'm trying to portray. So did any other artist inspire you? Someone? Yes, definitely. I have uh, both these giants. I have uh, Leonardo, and on this side, Avanindanath Tagore. Shonjivanda was a great admirer of Avanindanath Tagore. He used to say he's the giant, he's the he's God in the Indian uh, painting. And uh, there were two ways how I got influenced by Obanindranath. Initially, through the stories. He was a marvelous story writer, storyteller. And my mother used to read out when I was just five or so, she used to read out stories from his book. So I'd fallen in love with him at that time. He had a wonderful way of depicting uh, incidents and stories. Later on, when Shonjivanda introduced me and he used to go on praising naturally, you, you imbibe that. So he used to show me the wonder and the way 
both uh, Abhinindranath and Nandalal had painted the Indian scenes and Indian uh, uh, themes and their technique, wash technique. So I've, I've my uh, oil paintings are full of wash technique. Is that uh, one of your watercolors? Yes. Could you hold, hold that up and see it? <laughs> Tell us a bit about it. <laughs> this is absolutely a faded thing. And this was for the playground uh, bullet, in, uh, bullet uh, album I was drawing. And this is the one I'm doing for my birthday. So this I've, I've made a blow up, but I'm not showing you right now. I'll show you later on. It wasn't anything, uh, I mean, nothing tried out or nothing, uh, no attempt. It just uh, developed naturally. Naturally developed. Yes. Would you tell us a little bit about this painting? This is not one of my favorites. I'd rather keep it away. Uh, this is when Savitri is playing with the, you know, the, with nature, when she's still an adolescent, she's in her father's uh, kingdom and she's, you know the, which book is it? Uh, the Growth of the Flame, when she's growing up. So she's uh, in close contact with nature. Um, I don't remember how I got the idea. But it was just about a boat, a forlorn boat, waiting for the guide to come and take it. So that was the idea. It's a journey which the boat has to take. And a difficult journey, I think. But one sees the light at the end. Yes. And the, you expect the ferryman, the divine ferryman to come from there. Yes. What is the message of paintings? So what do you want to follow? Portray? No, I don't have any message. I just want to portray beauty. That's all. Nothing vulgar, nothing sentimental, restrained at the same time, something beautiful, so that it's... And the thing of beauty is a joy forever, right? Yes, and it soothes, it soothes me and I hope it will soothe the, the onlookers also. I'm not worried about the onlookers, I have to be satisfied and I'm a very hard critic very hard critic. I have to give the best and then only I'm happy. Then I think the painting is complete. What do you think the present trend of art? I have very poor notion about it because uh, if the artist is, uh, has something beautiful in, it, in him or her, he can express that. And that, I think, is the common malady of the present uh, time. And um, I stick to that, uh, the beautiful, the beautiful ideal that our Indian uh, artists had. And uh, that was, uh, the artist used to meditate before painting is to live with that idea and then is to portray that on the canvas. So today's artists 
uh, I don't think they do any such training of quietening the mind and then expressing something beautiful. If they were worshippers of beauty, that would be very evident on the canvas. Mother says, no, the modern painting is vulgar, but it has broken that tradition in order yes. to bring out something beautiful. Yes, yes. So that she, kind of experiment is going on. But here and there you can see yes. some really, you know, outstanding artists who are in that line. Yes. Very true. Huh. So you have been uh, doing paintings from Sanjay Mata for many years and uh, compared to that, as now you also be teaching some of the students you know, painting drawings. I used to, but I don't... So, uh, what do you find the difference that time and compared to now with the type of paintings that students do? Uh, we have Tanya or Tatiana Though she is giving a very formal training, you know, uh, beginning from the, as I had done with Chonji Vunda. So, some of the children are very, very promising, very promising. But the pity is after they finish the higher course, due to the pressure of the parents or their own, uh, you the know, Lord whatever. Of, the Lord of the outside. Yes. Well, most of them, they forget all that they had uh, acquired. Some are really gifted, you know, that um, you can make up with, for the, you know, with the touch of the brush, how beautifully they have shown the shades of, you know, the light, the play of light. Very restrained and very, very beautiful. But uh, naturally they must have a theme on which to work upon. Copying is okay for, you know, as an undergraduate, but then they have to develop into something more creative. When I came here at the age of four, uh, my mother naturally took me to the Divine Mother, but after that it was a special relationship which grew up with her. And uh, Priti B, Manojda's sister, has recorded that I had a very natural way of approaching the mother. I was very free with her and whatever problem I had, because she was never a distant or a mighty person, as uh, people looked upon as the divine, but just somebody very, very dear, very close to us. She was our mother. I think more than our physical mother, it was to her we turned for everything. When did you look upon her as the Divine Mother? And that reverence? Even now, that even was. now it's, she is more uh, an inspiration, she is more uh, somebody who holds me close in her, uh, uh, to herself whenever I'm in, uh, I have problems. It's always, she's there. I mean, she's not somebody very distant. I still can't look upon her as the Divine. She's the Mother, embodiment of love, solace, protection, all rolled into one. So, can you please tell, tell us about your love No, this is not love and death. This is from... Uh, God's labor. God's labor, where the, the ones who are tied to the, to the chain of life, there's no freedom. And uh, the God comes and speaks to them about this freedom. They said, what are you talking about? We are chained eternally to this uh, wheel of karma. Is Savitri is, when Savitri is going out in quest of Satyavan and she stops when the sun sets near a hermitage, 
and there's the quietness of the evening and she wraps around her the quietness of the evening. So when this was painted? This was painted long back, long back. But naturally there have been uh, revisions on it, so this is the latest revision. You're a very Western looking savage. <laughs> there you see. Pita <laughs> uh, you did Love and Death series. Yes, so they're how, all there. Uh, how did that happen? How, why you took it? Uh, actually, there are times when you come to a dead end, you don't know how to move forward. And uh, Shwanjivanda suggested that, why don't you do something from Shobindo, which is a narrative, and it will help you to paint a lot of, uh, you know, paintings successively. So I started Love and Death. It took me two years, three years to complete them. And how many paintings? There are about, I think, uh, 35. You'd like to see them? This is the first one I painted when Shonjivunda asked me to do the Love and Death series. So I never knew I would be painting so many after that. So this is my best one among them. It has something very spontaneous, very pure about the, the two lovers. What year was it? 73. The first painting. First painting. In the beginning, when uh, they are again enjoying each other's company, all was light and joy and perfume and desire. And uh, I think life desired the world. This is uh, when they're enjoying each other's company and uh, Shovindu describes and her touch thrilled, though not so light. Her touch was light, though not so light. This is when uh, Priyambada is uh, bitten by the snake and the torture that she undergoes. And Ruru just sees the hissing of this, hears more or less the hissing of the snake darting into green safety. She, for a moment, stood beautiful before she died. So, Ruru has just come back from his morning bath and uh, he feels all exhilarated and he has torn, a, I think he's brought her a flower to get to her because he knows her moods. And then as he darts towards her, finds that the She's, um, the snake is hissing to safety. And here, it's just before the snake bites her, she for a moment stood beautiful with her love before she died. The death in the forest 
after the snake has darted into safe into safety, Ruru comes and sees that she's in the throes of death. So she comes he comes and lifts her up, but it's too late. And he feels that uh, out of this uh, despair and depression, his heart just roars out, just as a fire. This was done at one go, Narad. <laughs> Watercolour, this was watercolour, not poster colour. But uh, on hind thoughts, now I wonder how I painted this. That come, I mean, the hands were not mine. <laughs> this is when he's cursing the Ashwatha tree to have cheated him. When you do these paintings, first do you sketch them, then do watercolour or small, small size, then you transfer into bigger size. That's what Shanjivanda is to say, that you waste so much of colour if you don't do it on a small scale. And then he always cited Leonardo's example. He also did the same. He made so many sketches. Leonardo. No, first you sketch it, then you water. So many sketches have to be discarded. Then you do small size like that. Yes, exactly. I've got the whole set of sketches of Lavender with me. It would be nice to see the one painting how uh, it evolves. Uh, uh. evolves you know? uh. And then while painting, naturally, you also evolve, no? After the sketch, initial sketch, you evolve, isn't it? The hand plays its own, the mind, the hand. And if you just let yourself go, wonderful things happen. This is after he has lost Priyambada, takes her in his arms. Frankly saying, if I were asked to paint this again, I wouldn't be able to do it. It was something else which was working at that time. The forms, the colors. This is Madan. Shobindo has represented Madan as a small boy, very much in the Greek tradition, Cupid. But our Madan is a more mature young man. So I portrayed the young boy, Cupid, who comes and uh, stands behind uh, Ruru to ask him what's ailing him. This is after he has lost Priyambada. I don't know what flower. Yeah, you look, you painted divine stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is Madan extending his hand to Ruru, and Ruru's caught it, the flower. What dangerous appeal. Beautiful words, Shobindu's. After he has met Madan, 
and he's determined to get back his uh, Priyambada. Madan is so touched by his determination, he offers him a flower that this is going to protect you. You go and appeal to Ganga and uh, she'll take you down to the netherworld. So here as he goes and appeals to the Ganga, the whole wave just, you know, rears over, above him and swallows him up and is taken to the netherworld. On his mission to find out Priyambada. Oh, you please repeat this again. He with the widening yellow Ganges came. This is his first leg of his journey and he comes to the Ganga where it's, uh, it, it's, broad, it's a broader section of the river and here as he waits uh, he'll uh, see the boatman coming. Here, Ruru meets uh, the boatman who's going to take him to Patal. And uh, Shobindo was greatly influenced by the Greek mythology. This is supposed to be Charon, but he doesn't name Charon. He gives a beautiful description. The boat stopped and the boatman lifted his eyes, go evil with the stars. This is uh, the bridge of fire which he has to cross and uh, there's a lady clad in fire and she says, no mortal being can cross this bridge prior going to the Hades. Because you have the flower in your hand that's protecting you, so she lends her hand and makes him cross the bridge. This is the nether world and the the first thing that he meets after crossing that bridge there's the vast land and there's the caverns and where you have this sinuous abode shapes lambent light in the caves wreathed shapes abhorrent The, the various, uh, how should I say, the figures he meets after he crosses over to the Hades. There are young men, there are, there's the dismal water, Ganga, the nether Ganga which is flowing. And then he comes to a bank where he finds a small children and they seem to be clinging to him with their eyes and won't let him go. And they're bereft of their childhood. And Ruru's heart just breaks when he watches this. This is a sequel to those children, big, the faces of the children you saw. Here they are the continuation of that. They were drooping like flowers. How many paintings are there in the series? Thirty-five. Okay. And I'll be adding ten more. That was in a watercolor. No. 
Ruru comes to Yama and uh, he puts forward his petition, I've come to take back Priyambada. And Shobinda has given a very powerful description of uh, the interior of the of Yama's palace. All the snakes and Mahapadma and the pillars are all, uh, you know, twined with the, with the serpents. And the flames. Also the flames. This is the watercolor. Watercolor. This is uh, German, uh, not watercolor, poster color. But I mean, the poster color had such a shine, and they withstood all these 30 years. I haven't touched them. But now you don't get, get them? No. I'm planning to do something, I'm going to add a few more paintings, but I'll have to follow this trend because my style has changed now. It's gone more to the abstract. So what series you plan to do? What are the current uh, series? Last year I did that uh, from that book, book four, book one, uh, Canto four, the and the, what do you say, the travail of the Mother Earth and the final joints. I still don't know what I'm going to do because I have lots to do right now. I've got to finish the dining hall paintings. I'm going to finish the Love and Death series. I'll have to add ten more paintings. Now that I plan to make a film. And uh, I think there's somebody in Auroville, no? uh, the name begins with them. He's an Indian. Manohar. No, Manohar. So, Roshan Ben suggested the idea. What would be the, the theme of the film? Uh, Love and Death. Love and Death, mm. I see. With Sunilda's music. And act actors and... No. You'll see the paintings, then oh, you'll yeah, see who are the actors and the actresses. So there'll be a recitation at the background? Uh, Christophe has already recorded it. Oh. And then we had the idea. Uh, so both Ashok and uh, Christophe said, you, I had earlier shown the slides with the uh, mother's music in the background. They said, this won't do. Mother's music is too meditative. And love and death is more of this, you know. So I've chosen, I've already chosen pieces from Sunilda, very appropriate. This is Rudu's appeal to the god of death. This Arvind, they said again, the the way they visualized on the, on the stage was very much with uh, Yama, with his back to the audience. You had the four-eyed dogs who are guarding the throne, very much a la Greek. We don't have this idea of uh, God of Death guarded by the dogs in Indian mythology. This, um, he has been debating with death. And death says, what are you going to do getting back Priyambada? You have just a few, you know, the few years you have, you enjoy them. Why do you have to share? Because the moment you give half of your life, your days will be shortened. He says, no, I'm determined, I'm going to get back my Priyambada. So, the God of Death says, okay, have it your way. And then Ruru just hurls out his life and he falls down prone and the whole scenario changes, the God of Death disappears, those flickering flames, they disappear. Only in the distance you have the dais on which Yama's throne was. And the 
the flickering of the flames. Yambada wakes up, wakes up to a new life, and uh, though Shobindu has expressed it in a different way, that she uh, she is lying on the in the embrace of Ruru, but here I have painted her alone, and she is enjoying the new life with the birds fleeting, and the sky has soft colors about it. Now that this was very much appreciated by one of the leading artists in Kolkata, he said that... that the uh, He's uh, dead. He said, this has come very close to some of the Western masterpieces. What was his name? Uh, I have it. I just discovered I had the, the file where they had all signed. I forget his name. Is he still living? No. He passed away a few years ago. He touched, and at the touch, the lines are also very beautiful. This is uh, after he has resuscitated Priyambada and she utters these words, Oh, love, the, the warm, warm sunlight, the beautiful world. I forget the lines. Oh, love, the... Warm, warm sunlight. So that's the best way of expressing uh, her, in a way, gratefulness and happiness after she is reunited with Ruru. This is the last bit. The, a solitary quail is singing, and both of them they are very, very happy to be alive in this in the spring of the of the world. The Pititi in the olden days, the early years of the Arsham, the number of, of Sataks were very few. So every sadhak used to have almost a big house of his own. You know, big uh, dining hall, kitchen, bedroom, etc. Now, these days, uh, rooms are very small. Those days, you know, artists have enough space to paint, experiment, and they, they could afford to do as mm. many paintings as they wanted. But these days, uh, they have very small rooms. Ambabish Garden, new creation. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is an artist, it's very difficult to do big, big paintings and there's no space to keep them. So how, uh, you, you have got this studio because you need a space to do paintings. So how did this studio come about? Uh, in the other house which we vacated, Somehow I managed to get a room because my auntie passed away, so her room I turned into a studio. And then when we had to shift, I asked, uh, whom did I ask that if I could have a room to paint because 
I think Vishwanatha. So when he was planning the house, we made it very clear that you couldn't have the dining hall or the your bedroom next to the studio. But the colors are very, you know, very poisonous. So that's how I think he agreed to give me a room. Thank you, Priti.